Hello! Get me. And today at Pokemon. Again. Now, I was in the middle of my grinding session, trying to get everybody up to a reasonable level at which I thought that they could take on Brock again. And I come across this bullshit. Now at a glance, not all of you may know what we're looking at, but those of you who do will know what absolute fucking garbage this is. That is a level 15 Caterpie, male, which means it's weaker than its female counterparts because that's what the internet says, surely. But also, it is shiny. Except, that doesn't help me because I have Butterfree over here. Level 18. Female, so it continues the meme. And already evolved. But not shiny. Now this isn't where I'm starting- well, this is where I'm starting the episode, but this isn't where we're gonna continue from. I just wanted to start the record right here to say, man, fuck these games. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to YouTube. It me, Wild Rosen. And today we're back with Pokemon Red. And nothing at all happened before I started recording. I didn't find a shiny Caterpie. That didn't happen. That would never happen. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> so we trained in the off screen again, like usual. And our things are a little bit stronger. I have Butterfree at level 18, and then Jessica and Lil Boy at level 17. Oh, nope, not headbutt. Uh, stats, yes. Lil Boy learned a new move. Hyper Voice. Not gonna help us in the slightest, but he learned it. And then Jessica also learned a new move. Electro Ball. Which might help us. I don't really know what that move does. I just switched out with Thundershock because I understand that Thundershock is basically the weakest electric move you can have. Butterfree, though, also learned a new move. Psybeam. Which ideally helps us quite a lot. Now, as for how I got them to that level, I'll, I'll demonstrate real quick. Going down to these little tall grassy areas brings up a level, what, like five, four, four Pokemon. Really not even worth the time to deal with. Um, so we're just gonna kick its ass real quick. But, while doing this, I noticed something that I think was in another recording, because I, uh, that or it was during an off-screen training session, one of the two. But I can walk up to basically any one of these trees, as long as I have, um, little boy here in the party with that headbutt that I brought up earlier. And yeah, I can headbutt that tree. And if I headbutt that tree... Well, nope, nothing that time. But if I headbutt that tree... It brings up a level 15 Pokemon. Which is way better for training purposes, needless to say. So then I just mash Z, as we are wont to do, and free experience. Real good. Real good arrangement. I like it a lot. Helps me tremendously. Now, for those of you watching who saw the Don't Starve that we did uh, the last two episodes, well, the last... The, the episode before last, because in the last episode I did I forgot to even turn this light on. But my big ring light, um... So I bought, like, a light, basically, to help with, uh, lighting. Hmm, imagine that, light for lighting. Um, it's fucked up. It's broken. So if things look weird between this recording to the last, it's because it broke it. I'm sorry. I got Amazon trying to fix it. But it's broken. And there's nothing I can do about broken stuff. Except, uh, use it in its broken state anyway, which is why everything should look a little bit blue right now. It's because half the light is blue. And I can't change that. But let's face Brock. Give it a shot here real quick. He steamrolled us last time. Um, wait. I don't think I have my Pokemon in a good order. This is probably real bad. I didn't change anything. Aerodactyl. Hello, Aerodactyl. So, because it's a rocky, defense -y type, it, it, the Hyper Voice actually might help out here a little bit. That didn't help you at all. I don't know why you even bothered using that agility. You are already faster than me, even though I'm five levels higher than you. Not very effective. Okay, so, changing strategies. Great. Missed. Okay, good. Cool. 
I forgot about that. Um, hang on just a second, folks. Sound. Actually, let me... There we go. Now you should be hearing nothing but me. I apologize. I forgot... I can still hear it, but I don't think you guys can anymore. If you can, I'm sorry. I, I tried to turn it off for you, and I'm pretty sure I did. But I forgot Rock 2 made that noise. Um, so I will endure, so you don't have to. So at any point, if you see me just cringe and recoil in abject terror, it's because I'm listening to that. So I'll turn on the game audio again, just as soon as we're, you know, destroyed by this. And we get through to the other side, but for now, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving that shit off. Oh, good job, Jessica! Jessica, the real powerhouse. Omastar. And now I'm like... 80% sure Omastar is rock type, but I also know it water type. So since electric, good against water type, but not good against rock type, does that mean Jessica can hurt Omastar? It does mean that! Ha! <laughs> Fuck you, Omastar. Get out of my face. Yeah, mm. Kick its ass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I apologize if this is really weirdly quiet for you. I should really be talking a lot more to fill the space since there's no, um... Ooh, Thunderwave. Since there's no background audio, maybe? Uh, Moop should be forgotten. Growl, since baby doll eyes and growl do the exact same thing. Let's talk to Phil Space. Let's ramble. Thunderwave, leader Brock is about to use Kabutops. Um, let's push our luck. I'm pretty sure we're just gonna do zero damage to Kabutops with our Electrobo. But, you know, let's get- oh, well, it, it wouldn't even matter in the first place. So switch into Butterfree. Okay, I'm gonna turn game audio back on. So everybody, it's back. Careful. You've been warned. Side Because if Kabutop uses used dead uh oh. Okay, I, I lied. I'm turning it back off. I saw he used a rock team there. Sorry folks. Sorry friends. I didn't I didn't uh I didn't think that far ahead. I saw a scratch and got hopeful that maybe he no have a rock team. Okay, we win! I can turn it back on! Okay, now it's ju not just me again. <laughs> Alright, what do we have? We winded. We winded! I thought he was gonna have more Pokemans. I wasn't paying attention. I was so focused on Rock Team's horrible, horrible sound. We winded! Yay, we're good at th I'm good at this game. You guys are great at this game, I'm sure. Those of you playing along at home, I'm sure, are so much farther than me. You've probably already beaten the Elite. So Big Boy made more money than Big Boy has ever seen in Big Boy's entire life. What TM is this? It's Rock Team, isn't it? Oh, I'm, I'm. Don't worry, folks. I am not teaching that to any one of my Pokemon. I'm actually gonna go sell that TM right now. That is our number one mission in life to get that shit out of our faces. Item shop, Marto place, sell. We're we're getting rid of that immediately. Yes, please. Okie dokie. That's a lot of potions. Oh wait, actually, I might want some escape ropes. I will get two escape ropes. Because we are going into the Clefairy Cave pretty soon. So our goal for this episode... I was going to say it was going to beat Brock, but um, I didn't think we were going to win. That was that was actually kind of uh, anticlimactic. I apologize. I, I didn't think we were going to win. I was so, uh, so fixated on the loss that we were going to receive. So fo- oh, well, I'm glad I didn't actually walk into you. So- So a uh, focused on the L that I didn't notice the W. I didn't see the W coming. But we're gonna go back to training, uh, Lil Boy for a little bit. Lil Boy for a little bit. Lil Boy the little girl, the Zigzagoon. Cause I think that Lil Boy might be close to evolving. Maybe. We got a Lil Boy at 17. Um... Now, our poor Butterfree has kind of outlived her usefulness. I, uh, really, I just kind of expected to need her to beat Brock. 
as, you know, I think the tactic probably is in typical games. But here we are. We beat Brock. None too difficult to leave. Though we did use Butterfree, so, you know, that's fair. Purpose fulfilled. I'm probably gonna leave her on our team anyway. Butterfree did a good job. Even though it's not a shiny Butterfree. That I don't want to talk about. Headbutt was disabled. Alright, so your fairy types in later games. I know fairy type was added to this game, so I'm gonna assume that you were also a fairy type in this one. And that if I use dark, it got going to shit. It'll do zero for- oh, that actually did some good damage. I still prefer a headbutt, because it has a chance of, um, uh, flinching. And she is a good tactic. Goodbye, Jigglypuff. Now send out your clip out. Oh. Another Jigglypuff. A ill-advised decision. If the last one didn't work, why would this one? At the very least, the, uh, the setups in these games, like where trainers will have like four copies of the same Pokemon, it is probably realistic to the kind of the world that they live in. Okay, that, that, that noise wasn't too bad. I'm gonna... Oh, oh, wait, fight worked. I... Not very effective, but it worked. Okay, I thought it was not effective at all. I didn't think it was gonna do anything, but cool. But, like, trainers that have, like, just, like, four Caterpies... Oh, still disabled. Have, like, four Caterpies or something. That seems like what would actually happen if Pokemon were real. Like, how many of you wouldn't have, like, six Eevees and be trying to evolve them, really? Like, everybody's, everybody would talk some big shit about how they're gonna be the number one Pokemon trainer. And not saying that there wouldn't be people going after that stuff hardcore if this was real. But, like, that's just realistic to the setting as well. But, like, most of us, really, we'd have, like, we, we'd, we'd have our home city. we live in Palatown or whatever, though. And we just walk out into, like, the grass, maybe in that route right beside us, or the next couple branching out from that town. And we just, like, find our favorite Pokemon that's native to that region, and we'd have, like, four. I mean, maybe not everybody, but I think most people would probably do something along those lines. It'd be like people with dogs. Like, if I were to get another dog, it would be most likely another Shiba Inu, which is what I have now. The mama's around here somewhere, probably avoiding me because I'm talking a lot, doesn't know what to make of it. And, um, I'd get another one. I'd just get a white one, probably. And I think that would be the same with Pokemon. I think, you know, if I, say I lived in Pewter City, uh, you know, I'd be the, like, poofy little, you know, one pointed out in mock for being a faggot for having, like, six Clefairies. I'd probably have a whole bunch of those, because Clefairies are adorable. That's the kind of Pokemon I'd want to have around the house. Could you imagine using a Clefairy as a pillow or some shit? That'd be awesome! So I'd probably have a bunch of those. Maybe, maybe I'd have caught a Caterpie to have a Butterfree. I don't know. But I wouldn't branch out much, i just have, like, the Pokemon that I like. But of course, in like the game setting, it, it just seems ridiculous if you don't think about it. Like trainers, such as that last one we faced that had two Jigglypuffs and an Eevee. Which, basically the kind of Pokemon I'd want to have. You know, cute things, good pets, nice to have around the house. Personally, I wouldn't want a Charmander or something like that. Like a thing with a fire on its tail all the time. Would you really want that in your house? No. No, you'd have that for, like, it's, it's like people buying huskies. Like, husky, great dog breed and all, but people see Game of Thrones, see those dire wolves, and don't really think about it. They're like, oh, husky's easy. That is one of the biggest and most energetic dog breeds out there, and they are not aggressive. Like, huskies are very friendly. Like, you know, you know par for the course is what I'm referring to here. I'm not talking about, like, ones that are raised to be more aggressive, because I'm sure that's possible. But, like, general nature versus nurture, their nature would be friendly. And I know because I've had one, and it was incredibly difficult. Which is the same way that I think, like, a Charmander, or maybe not a Growl, that Growl, that seems like a good boy, but, like, a Charmander would be scaly, it wouldn't be fun to pet. If you have a lizard, great. If you have a snake, great. They're really cool. But you don't really, at least the people I've met, you don't pull it out of the cage that much to play with it. Right? 
Like, it's it's not that often. It's not like a dog or a cat where it's just, like, lounging around and then you walk up to it, its tail starts, you know, going back and forth. Super happy to see you shaking its ass trying to get petted. Big difference. Then you pet a dog, typically speaking, at least. They're very soft! I know there's some that have wirier coats and there's dyes you can use to fix that, and I'm sure that would be a big part of, uh, the Pokemon world as well. All of which to say... God, the Kanto starters would suck as, like, actual pets. I wouldn't want a Squirtle. I wouldn't want a Charmander. And I wouldn't want a Bulbasaur as, like, an actual pet. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It, I'm sure it would grow on me. But, like, Blue in the actual series for, like, comic books and stuff, at least, I believe, he, he does get that Eevee, right? And that's what I'd want, something fluffy, something nice, like a more conventional pet. Because the conventional pets are conventional for a reason. Like, those are just the ones we're compatible with. So, like, having that little fox dog would be awesome. As would, like, e even just going and catching a rat attack. Like, that would probably be a lot more popular in terms of legitimate pets than most other things. So how many people, their first pet is like a hamster or something? Or a chinchilla, or a gerbil. Something along those lines. It's a pretty high percentage of the population. Oh, I gave it an intriguing look. I assure you, little miss. Not that, mmm. That's a short ass skirt, though. Maybe it. Jennifer. That's like Jessica. Maybe it was an intriguing look, Jennifer. Maybe it's. Oh, you have a jigglypuff. It's no Clefairy, but I heard they may make good pillows. I was about to make a different joke, and I'm not going to. Don't don't think about where that joke was going to go. It's inappropriate. It's inappropriate, and I apologize. But this is a female Pokemon, so that means it's strong. If it weren't for the fact that this is already her Jigglypuff, I would catch that Jigglypuff. Because Jigglypuff's pretty cute, honestly. Hey, Day. Remember that part where we couldn't ever make money, my friends? I found the answer to our problems. No more is Big Boy going to struggle to purchase a potion at the Pokemon Mart. Now we just spam the absolute fuck out of Payday as we... Can I, can I switch this? How do I move? Oh, yeah. Move it right up front. Move it right up front. Just Payday everything. That did no damage. Fine. It's fine. It's fine, because payday doesn't matter for the damage. There's not many other ways we can get money, my dudes! But now we can. But now we can. Payday is special, though, right? Physical, not special. Oh. Oh. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. I don't want this battle to last 20 minutes. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna have to not use payday. I was, I was talking about some real big game. But, um... I do not want you guys to have to watch me fight a Clefairy for 15 minutes. Which is basically what's probably already been happening. Listen to me ramble about what Pokemon would and would not make good pets. Now Zigzagoon! Probably. Can you stop? Jesus fucking Christ! What is with that double slap? Stop! Time wasters. That's what we call those. 76 monies, so I think that... Oh, hi. I didn't realize I hadn't bought you yet. Um, I think that Payday works in that it gives me the amount of money based on my Pokemon's level. So, like, I should be making, what, 18 monies per Payday? Right? Hmm, pretty weak, but... Throw at least one Payday. I'll do one Payday! And then I'll switch out. Just so I can see how much money we pick up at the end and see, you know, roughly how much I'm making per use of this ability. Um, let's send out Jessica. Kick its ass, Jessica! That's a boy Caterpie, it ain't shit. On a scale from one to shit, it's shit! Good. Look at that. And there's more, I'm sure, yeah, there is. Metapod! Kick its ass to Max Z. Max Z to win. We don't need any other button in our life. And it goes down. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. It's that easy. It is that easy to skin a metapod. 
Harden? I don't think so. Not on Jessica's watch. No, no, no. No hardness on Jessica's watch. She's like, mm. <laughs> No. 38. 38. Music goes level 19. Okay. So it's... It's, um, double your level for mine. That's pretty good. I mean... I don't think I've been getting that much money from these, uh, little basic trainer battles anyway, so the next time we get shit on, we'll, you know, we'll hopefully have remembered to use our money during a difficult battle, and everything will be cool. But my goal right now, for this episode, we're already actually a, a little past the 20 minute mark, so I'm gonna have to be careful, because I don't want to waste too much of your time in a single episode. No, I'm not wearing shorts. How did you... No, I have a trainer card. It shows my portraits. No, I'm wearing jeans. I'm wearing jeans, my dude. Th them some short-ass booty shorts. You like Jennifer up there. You wearing some short-ass shorty shorts. I don't know if you was allowed to wear that, my dude. I think that might be, uh, violating some child... I'm not gonna continue, though. Payday! Payday's a good move. He did a focus energy, and I still don't actually know what that does. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna pause this for just a second, and I'm actually gonna report back on what paid or what a uh, focus energy does. Okay. So I'm looking at this right now, and so I don't know what it does in this. So, just reading literally straight off of Bulbapedia, focus energy worked incorrectly in Generation 1. While it was intended to multiply the user's critical hit ratio by 4, Instead, divide the critical hit ratio by four. Focus energy will be removed by switching or haze. The effect of focus energy cannot stack, and it will fail if the user is already under its effect. So I don't know if this hack fixed that. I don't think enough people use focus energy for anybody to give a shit. But actually... Excuse me. Um... Multiplying crit rate by four, not bad at all. Really? If, like, I had an Absol or something with that, uh, what move is that? Lucky something? Absol has a thing that, like, boosts crit rate. If I was just stacking that, focus energy would actually probably be great. Oh, especially in, like, Sword and Shield. Where, um, like, for, for those max, Dynamax raids or whatever. Um, this crit goes through their shield to, like, deal its full damage, right? I know Absol was released in the newest, uh, the newest DLC for Pokemon Sword and Shield. At least I, I'm like 90% sure. I did look it up because I was kind of curious, but that was like before it came out. But, um, I haven't actually played it since, so... I just know that I was kind of excited for the possibility of getting Absol because I found out that critical hits will go through... Critical hits will go through, like, shieldy stuff, and that was cool. No Butterfree! Disgusted. Disgust it. To show a little gusty love. 279. Alright, so Butterfree strong, but Butterfree really... Ooh, picked up 266. See, that's good. That's a lot of money right there, relatively speaking. That's like almost a whole potion by itself. And potions are, I mean, not hot commodities. We don't use them that often. But when we do, we want to have them on hand. And then I know that, um... I haven't really been touching it... Um, during this playthrough, because my recording hasn't been wasting your time. Or my, not my recording. My, uh, my recording's definitely been wasting your time. My, um, training. I, my off-screen training. I, I'm doing that for those of you that, you know, may think that I'm cheating or cutting corners by training off-screen. Um, it's so that I don't, like, just sit here and completely, just fight him, I completely dick over your time frame and, uh, not make any progress by doing all this bullshit on-screen. Like, you don't need to see me sitting and fighting, like, 20 level 15 Caterpies for, what, 30, 40 minutes just to get our Pokemon up to par. Um, I already don't really edit these, so, you know, it'd just be a huge waste of your time. And I don't want to do that. That's not what we're, that's not what our goal here is on the YouTubes. We're here to entertain. This is a fun hobby, right? I mean, I, I do this recording stuff for me, but, you know, I still got a bear in, like, I, I find this enjoyable. But I still gotta bear in mind the people are watching this, and I, I think I've been pretty, pretty sensitive to that fact. Uh, the people watch this for entertainment, to, to some degree, or because I told them to. You know, one of the two. And 
try to cut out the, the bullshit when I can. God, that hurt a lot. Sorry, I got distracted there, and that's because I was noting, noticing how much fucking damage we took from that shitty little oddish. Yes, we'll change Pokemon. Good God. Go, Jessica. There we go. Jessica, use that Electro move. Wait, Electro doesn't... Electric type doesn't do a lot of damage to... Yeah, it doesn't. Okay. Alright, that's fine. So we're gonna take some Periodic Dance. I forgot how rap works in this generation. So I'm literally just stuck here just watching this go. Oh god. Please don't. I'll oh, think fuck. Oh my god. If I'm gonna have to start dealing with more bell sprouts, that's gonna be so irritating. Alright. I'll be back when this rap is done. Back! That actually didn't last that long. It lasted way longer last time. Oh, uh, we only took like two hits, so that's eight health off of Jessica. And we did it! We're level 19. Good job, Jessica. Do you gain any moves, please? No? Oh, okay. Venonat. Um, uh, Venonat's partially poison type. So we use a Psybeam. And I've nearly taken up 30 minutes of your time, so I'm gonna go ahead and, um... Actually, are you... You're, you're arguably the last trainer on the way to the Pokemon Center, so what I will do is I will just duck around the little ass there that does have a Clefairy. Silver White. Bug type? Yes, wh whatever it is, I want it. Um, you're a garden, please. That's a good move, I think. Pretty sure. I know when I was a kid, I used to think that Butterfree was a Psychic type just because it learns confusion. I thought it was like Psychic Bug or something, but no, it's Psychic Flying. Okay, so I dodge around her. Don't turn. Alright, and now I just have, unless they added more bullshit for me, just a clear shot to this Pokemon Center. And we got a list of this goodbye, goodbye little boy. Of course, little boy has to die at the end of every episode. Um, we'll heal up, and that'll be all for tonight, folks. Have a great evening, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.